Today we have this really cool integral that evaluates to one of our favorite constants. So to begin the solution development, we're going to call the integral i. And first up, I want to transform this pi times x term into some other variable. So let's make a substitution by letting pi times x equal u. And this implies that dx equals 1 by pi du. Now what about the limits of integration? Well, as x approaches 0, we have u approaching 0 as well. Whereas when x approaches 1, we have u approaching pi. Okay, cool. So this implies that the integral now in the u world is an integral from 0 to pi of x turns into u divided by pi. Then we have this 1 minus u by pi term. And the differential element is 1 by pi du. And we're dividing this by the sine of u. And on simplification, I can write this as the integral from 0 to pi of u divided by pi times pi minus u divided by pi times 1 by pi divided by the sine of u du. So that means I have this constant term of 1 by pi cubed times the integral from 0 to pi of u times pi minus u times the cosecant of u du. We can now adopt an integration by parts approach because this term here is the differential of log tangent u by 2. So on integration by parts, I have 1 by pi cubed times the log of the tangent of u by 2 times this u times pi minus u term minus 1 by pi cubed times the integral from 0 to pi. Now, this thing here is basically u times pi minus u squared. So differentiating this gives me pi minus 2 times u times the logarithm of the tangent of u by 2 du. Oh, forgot the limits over here are 0 and pi. So as x approaches 0, you can verify using L'Hopital's rule that you'll get a 0. Similarly, by using L'Hopital's rule, you can verify that in the limit as u approaches pi, you also get a 0. So this thing here crashes, and it implies that i equals negative 1 by pi cubed times the integral from 0 to pi of pi minus 2 times u times the logarithm of the tangent of u by 2 du. Now, how exactly do we evaluate this integral? Well, you all know I love series expansions, and there's a very nice series expansion for the logarithm of the tangent of u that I'm going to derive right now. Now, for a tangent, you need a sine and a cosine. So we could really use a series expansion for log 2 sine x, and thankfully, we have one. Link in the description below for a video proof on my channel as well as a write-up on my Instagram. So the series expansion for log 2 sine x is negative sum over the positive integers n of cosine 2nx divided by n. And for the cosine, we have log 2 cosine x equal to the sum over n of negative 1 to the n plus 1. Or I can just write this as negative sum negative 1 to the n of cosine 2nx divided by n. Now, if I take the logarithm of 2 sine x and I subtract from it the logarithm of 2 cosine x using the properties of the logarithm, I can write this as log 2 sine x divided by 2 cosine x. So the 2s cancel out, and what I have is the logarithm of the tangent of x. So that means all I have to do is just take this series expansion and subtract from it this other series expansion. And then I'll get the required expansion for the logarithm of the tangent. So this implies that log tangent x equals for the sine uh, for the sine series we have negative sum over n. Oh terribly sorry about that of cosine 2 n x divided by n and minus, but wait, two negatives give you a positive, so there's a plus sign there, sum over n of negative 1 to the n times cosine 2 n x divided by n. So this means we have the sum over the positive integers n 
of negative 1 to the n minus 1 with cosine 2nx factored out, and we're dividing by n. Now, whenever n here is an even integer, then we have 1 minus 1, which is 0. So the only values of n we're interested are of the form 2k plus 1, where k is an integer. So this implies that log tangent x equals the sum over n of negative 1 minus 1 is just negative 2. And here we have the cosine of 2, 2k plus 1 x. And wait a second. We're summing over k and to include k uh, n equals 1, to include n equals 1, we need k to start at 0. Okay, cool. And we're dividing by 2k plus 1. Okay, nice. So far, so good. So we have negative 2, or wait, we can just transfer this to the other side and write this as log tangent x by 2 equal to negative sum over the non-negative integers k of the cosine of 4k plus 2x divided by 2k plus 1. Now for the integral, we needed the logarithm of the tangent of u by 2. So just perform a transformation here going from x to u by 2, and we have log tangent u by 2 equal to, again, multiply by 2 both sides. Should have just kept it there. So I have negative 2 times the sum over k of the cosine 4k plus 2 divided by 2 is just 2k plus 1 u divided by 2k plus 1. That is quite a nice looking series expansion indeed. And returning to my integration problem, what I have now on the right hand side is positive 2 by pi cubed times the integral from 0 to pi of pi minus 2 times u times the sum over k of the cosine of 2k plus 1 u divided by 2k plus 1 integration with respect to u. Now because this is independent of k, we can slip it inside the sum. We have 2 by pi cubed times the integral from 0 to pi of the sum over k of pi minus 2 times u divided by, uh, multiplied by the cosine of 2k plus 1 u divided by 2k plus 1 integration with respect to u. And on switching up the integration and summation operators, we have 2 by pi cubed times the sum over k of the integrals from 0 to pi of pi minus 2 times u times the cosine of 2k plus 1 u divided by 2k plus 1 du. And of course, this term here is independent of the u variable with respect to which we're integrating. So we can write this as 2 by pi cubed times the sum over k of 1 by 2k plus 1 times the integral from 0 to pi of pi minus 2 times u times the cosine of 2k plus 1 u du. The resulting integral can be solved quite easily using integration by parts. So we have 2 by pi cubed times the sum over k. And on integration by parts, wait, we have this 2k plus 1 term as well. Now on integration by parts, we have pi minus 2 times u times the sine of 2k plus 1 u uh, divided by 2k plus 1 with the limits being 0 and pi. Now let me just evaluate it over here. We have sine of some integer multiple of pi, which is, of course, 0. And the sine of 0 is also a 0. So yeah, this entire thing just evaluates out to 0. And what I'm left with is a negative sine integral from 0 to pi. Wait, wait, wait. There was a constant multiple of 2k plus 1, 1 by 2k plus 1 left from the integration of the cosine function before. So we have the integral from 0 to pi now, and on differentiation, what we get is just a negative 2, right? So two negatives make a positive, and we have 2 by 2k plus 1 times the integral of the sine of 2k plus 1 u du. Again, this is pretty easy to evaluate. This just sorts out to a negative cosine 2k plus 1 
u divided by 2k plus 1, with the limits being 0 and pi. So what exactly is the cosine of 2k plus 1 pi? Well, this is the cosine of some odd integer multiple of pi, which is always negative 1. And the cosine of 0 is 1, so negative 1 minus 1 is just negative 2. That cancels out this negative sign as well. And this implies that i equals 2 by pi cubed times the sum over k of 1 by, rather make this 2 by 2k plus 1 squared. And wait, we have this extra factor of 2k plus 1 as well. So that's 2k plus 1 cubed times 1. Okay, cool. So wait a second, I'm missing something. I'm definitely missing something. There was a 2 here and a negative 2 from here. So that gives me a 4. Okay, cool, with the negative signs cancelling out. Uh, hard keeping track of the numbers. We have 8 by pi cubed times the sum over k of the reciprocals of the odd cubes. Now, how exactly do I express this in terms of something much nicer? Let's turn to zeta 3. That is the sum over the positive integers k of 1 by k cubed. Now you can decompose this into sums over even and odd integers. So for the case of even integers, you have the sum over k of 1 by 2k cubed. And for the odd piece, we have the sum over k now starting at 0 to include the number 1. So we have 1 by 2k plus 1 cubed. And this term here can of course be written as 1 eighth of the sum over k of 1 by k cubed plus let's call this sum here s and this here is zeta 3 and this here is 1 eighth of zeta 3 so this implies that the sum s is 7 eighths of zeta 3. Okay cool so returning to the integration problem i equals 8 by pi cubed times 7 eighths of zeta 3. So this implies that our target integral i is just 7, lucky number 7, divided by pi cubed times zeta 3. Quite a beautiful result indeed, involving Apery's constant, as well as the number 7. And I'm a Cristiano Ronaldo fan anyway, so the number 7 is always welcome. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.